We are here with what is sure to be a thrilling series of the Star Wars Living Card Game. I am Steven. And I'm Zach. And we are watching games from Ground Zero Games in Tyler, Texas. Special thanks to Ground Zero for allowing us to come out and record these games. Uh, was this the first Star Wars regional, or was one of the one of the early ones? I know uh, it was one of the first handful. I think there were a couple a week or two before. Um, but we we have Dennis on the left and Matt on the right, both of which made the top cut at Worlds last year. Dennis, of course, going on to actually win the World Championship. So some high-profile players in Tyler, Texas. Yeah, it was a surprisingly just high highly competent field. All right, so what do we have on the objective side of things? Looks like Dennis is starting Imperial. He has two Executor Arrives and one Imperial Command. Uh, pretty standard Sith Control looking deck. Matt on the right, pure Smugglers. He's got uh, Smuggler Affiliation, Against All Odds, which is Dash Rendar, Trust Me, and Across the Anuit. This is a deck we saw all day long. This now, event was before the recent restriction of both Dash Rendar and the Freeholders Objective sets. And kind of one of the reasons I feel like that decision was made, so this event was held right before uh, that kind of emergency uh, restricted list, and a lot of players thinking that this uh, kind of game may be the reason, uh, which I don't know if it'll be a, a big freeholder style game or not, but we can only assume the worst from the old smugglers. Yeah, pretty much all day long, uh, most light side decks were running pure smugglers eight of the same objectives out of ten, and you were just seeing games being won on dial at two, dial at three. Uh, just consistently you'd have scenarios where you just really can't win the game as dark side, and you're just trying to stall at that point. Well, that's not what you want. Not at all. Looks like Dennis dropped in an Advisor of the Emperor and a Stormtrooper. Uh, the light there is making it difficult to see. Yeah. But and what did, uh, was that a holding, that one holding all the cards? That's a sabotage. Okay, so discarded a sabotage to draw a card. And we're going to see if Matt can use these smugglers' tricks to his advantage here. So it looks like he's got five resources available. Um, I see a Han in his hand, which could be really good because he can just swing and blow up the uh, advisor of the Emperor real quick, even if he can't drop freeholders for days here. What do you think Matt's thinking right now? Uh, what's the number of things that, as a Smuggler's player, may be in your hand right now that you're wanting to play? Is he, you think he's going heavy sleuth scouts? You think he's trying to drop a uh, dash in there? What's his plan here? I guess we'll find out. We're about to find out. I, I had a chance to play Matt in the regular rounds of the tournament and okay. talk with him there and at Worlds. And I just want to say, I mean, I think he is one of the most consistently good players I've seen ever in this game. Doesn't really make mistakes. He reminds me a lot of Matt Coles in that regard where you just don't see him slip up or miss a sequence or a part of the phase at any point. I think at this point it's really a decision between Han or Freeholders. Um, I'm not sure if he can make uh, Dennis draw a card or not. Looks like, okay, shifty lookout. Matt immediately force choking. Uh, and Matt is canceling with Trust Me. Um, so it's kind of a net zero on the cards in hand here. Paying four for the Freeholders. So that's not nearly as bad as uh, it could be. Keeping the uh, freeholders going for the freeholders, regardless of them being a good deal. I mean, at, at the end of the day, even a four cost for a freeholders there with that, those icons, that health um, and elite is not awful. It looks to me like Matt mistakenly put an extra resource on that uh, against all odds, didn't he? Yeah, I think he, he, he meant to, to put it on his affiliation. I think they correct that shortly, but we'll see. I, d I doubt that goes unnoticed. There you go. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> And Matt's swinging, swinging at one of those uh, the executor top objectives. Arrives, yeah. executor arrives. I'm, I'm a little surprised he didn't play uh, play Han there, but we'll see how it works out. The, Han's tough, though, because he's so easy to deal with if you don't have Protect out. All right. Dennis, Dennis passes. passes. Could, Could be a, a twist. twist. It is. It's a twist. One of the greatest cards in this game, without a doubt, and winning some card advantage there. Oh, dropping Han to the edge battle. Uh, surprised Dennis blocked and then twisted and then passed. That that was his plan. Yeah. Getting some cards out of hand. I suppose it's not a terrible idea. Yeah, it's almost... It's interesting to me, though, because unless that's a protector, I'm not seeing... Uh, it is a protector. That makes a way more sense. Yeah, that makes it way more sense now. <laughs> and he protects it all. Yeah. 
suppose I have to focus him. You don't, right? So I, I, actually, oh, sorry, you I, focus I, first. I actually have to. Yeah, you do. Four to the objective because he must focus the advisor. He'd rather not, actually, because the advisor won, lost the edge battle, so he wasn't going to get to do anything and would strike twice for being committed. But he had to focus him down. Taking the uh, the force with Shifty Lookout. And again, it's really this... The, probably going to be a decent example. Before draw, another force choke on the lookout. Yeah, so it's on Dennis's turn, so he can actually play force choke at this point. He's got to decide whether he wants to cancel it with that trust me or it's not. It's kind of hard to, to chuck a force choke uh, with trust me. That's pretty nice. Well, part part of the... And we'll, we'll potentially see it at play here. Part of the, I guess, terrifying thing of this deck is you don't necessarily want to blow objectives up yeah. uh, because they have um, another oh you can't force choke uh, looks like he's forced lightning so I would attempt to cancel almost and blow up the trust me Matt's not going for it yeah can you use it if it only has one health left you can you can try to pay the cost you just don't get the effect Ah. so they, they ruled it where you, you can still try and it blows it up. But again, uh, he has the objective in his objective deck for the freeholders that bounces all units to hand. At this point, it doesn't really matter if you look at Dennis's board. But still... Uh, still a threat. that Maybe he wants to keep that threat open for later on in the game if Dennis deploys a bunch of dudes. Because he does know there's a force choke coming down the, the pipe that Dennis attempted to play there, but then couldn't because it was a little bit once per round. And there's a little one-cost dude. Is that ISP? Is that the interrogator? It is, is the ISP liaison. Liaison. Honestly, it's not horrible for Dennis, but this is where he can get out of hand against the smugglers. Um, I think Dennis is left with four cards in hand. No, he's got two. Oh, he played the Force Lightning. Um, yes, he did. And then after refresh, he is going to try to launch that Force Choke. And that'll assure that if he does blow that up, he wouldn't get another objective then. Yeah. That way. Timing right, so in this game, everything. That is definitely why you do it after refresh. So we'll see what Matt can respond with here. I, I feel like Dennis is a little bit open. Um, he checks the freeholders there, it looks like. Yeah. I, I think at this point you're really wishing you had that Han back. Uh, I see Sleuth and Orlando, looks like, coming into hand here. Also got the operative that's going to be free, uh, which is going to be nice. So he's only got three resources open here. Yeah, that's a. This could be good for Dennis. This uh, a a good tempo shift. It looks like the operative for free is certainly uh, nice. But it, will it be enough? Well, on top of a sleuth, it's definitely gonna help. But Dennis looks like he's in a position to handle that kind of play. Yeah, he's only got one card in hand though, uh, and I see a target, a dash, and a Lando over in Matt's hand. So Matt can definitely win the edge battle. Um, I'm pretty sure we'll see a sleuth swinging in here. We'll see what happens. Operative can pop the uh, uh, top objective if he wants, I imagine. Here comes the sleuth. Yeah, going with the middle executor arrives here. And that's a really great play because if Dennis blocks with either unit, Matt's pretty sure he can win the edge battle, kill the unit, get the unopposed damage on the objective. He's got a target, so... He'll be swinging for a lot of damage here. Dennis not even going to block, which is a smart decision. And that's when those smuggler objectives begin to stack up. If it's unopposed, if you swung alone, if and if. Yep, so three damage there. He's going to go the operative. And this is, this is really just perfect because he only needs to get one damage in, um, which he can get with target even if he loses the edge battle and dies to the ISP liaison or something, mm -hmm. um, he's still going to be just fine getting the objective in. You, you kind of just don't even want to give him a... Oh, I don't know. Not really a good play here on Dennis's side of the board. It's uh, With one card in hand, it's just tough. Putting the liaison in. And what is that card? Was that a heat? I think it was a twist. Heat would be very good. <laughs> All right. Ooh. Target to twist, so it's gone. But at this point, all Matt has to do is win the the edge battle, which he does with the sleuth, and, and he's going to blow the objective up. Yeah. And Dennis is probably hoping that Matt would commit at least another card to that twist. That's a, that's honestly a fine play. Dennis Dennis needs cards, so he's he would have probably dumped that twist either way. Got rid of a unit. He did, he lost an objective, but there wasn't much he could do about that. And fall the Jedi, not a bad one to see. 
So it looks like he should have eight resources open to him. It looks like he got plenty of tools to deal with the sleuth that's on the board right now as well. Yeah. I saw a couple stormtroopers. Sith Library, another stormtrooper. And... Duty officer? The, the old duty officer. Another stormtrooper. The, the fine balance here, though, is, is you see Dennis dropping so many cards out of his hand, um, which is going to make Matt winning edge battles really easy. And so, like, yes. right now that sleuth has two black or uh, two objective damage. He he just needs to attack, win an edge battle, and he can blow an, a second objective up. Yeah. Looks and like another apprentice. Yeah. I mean, this is going to, I feel like this is going to give Dennis some tempo going into his next turn. It's all a matter of how how well he can weather the smuggler offensive this time. Because he'll have a lot of bodies on the board. He'll be able to spend resources on more controlling type effects or events or just hold cards for the edge battle. And uh, but right now he is he is scarily more wide open than he looks uh, just because the sooth really just needs to get it shot off and leave. Yeah, and I mean, this is really a, a huge part of the problem with the and why I think the cards got restricted. Because uh, it puts you in a position where, you know, Dennis there, he can either play a lot of guys out and empty his hand and make freehold is not a possibility, uh, or he can hold cards and hope to win the edge battle, but then could Matt could drop three freeholders then, yeah. which you can't really do anything about yeah. either. So it really just it, it put Darkseid in a bad way. So you're saying freeholders is a good card. Freehold, it, it's the mix. <laughs> Uh, in and of themselves, they're not too crazy, but together it just gets absurd. Yeah, makes a lot of sense that those two do not need to be seeing play together. Looks like we also have a swindled in hand, which just adds to the problem of the freeholders. But does he have the freehold? Because we saw him chuck one to the uh, discard pile earlier. Well, Dennis only has one card in hand. Matt's got... Looks like he's slicing it. What's he slicing? Um, I'm surprised he's doing this now. He, yeah, he may be. Is he trying to cancel his own event here? I think, well, you can't. he wouldn't cancel it because he doesn't okay. have enough damage, but he could try and blow up his objective. A lot of times players will save that for the end of their opponent's turn so they can tee up the card that bounces all the units. Yeah. Um, but doing it now just costs you two resources, so, like, to cancel it. Yeah. Dash for days. There's Dash. So Dash can be sneaky. Um, you do your edge battle, he can play a swindled, he can play holding all the cards, and all of a sudden you've got three or four cards in your hand and he's swinging for for a lot of damage. <laughs> for game. For game. You know, sneaky smugglers. Makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? And the plot thickens. I'll be really curious to see how Matt does this. He definitely saved that one resource so that he can use uh, Swindled. It also gives him an event he can attempt to cancel to go ahead and blow up his own Trust Me. Uh, it's a great time to blow Trust Me up with the, the uh, resources locked down like that. Dennis sacrificing his ISP liaison to draw a card. And uh, take a peek. You know, that's really interesting because he, he drew a card. And now he's going to have to block with two units. To not be stuck with Dash doing a bunch of objective damage. Yeah, he's getting both Stormtroopers in there. All right, well, that's a good start. And Dash causing significant problems, as he tends to do, trying to infiltrate this defense. And now yeah, we I have mean, our edge battle. With against all odds out, oh, interesting timing. So the trooper before the edge battle. Yeah, I would much rather Dennis not have that card and then force him to have it after it's all said and done. Because it, it it gives Dash an objective damage, and it also, from against all odds, gives him a second objective damage. So I'm curious what, what happened there. Three with a heat. Boy, that's exactly what you want. Fantastic for Dennis here. Really starting to stabilize. Now, Dennis only has one unit left. Very surprising he used that swindled so early. 
If he had saved it, he'd still have it for this. Yeah. Which would be massive, because Dennis can't, couldn't block and dump cards. And we'll see. And it's nothing. The Sith Library. So it looks like that sleuth's going to come in and make it happen. Very interesting move there. And Dennis looks like has has gained a little bit of control here in true dark side fashion. He's kind of creeping up. Now, if we do see that reset the board uh, objective, it's going to be a real problem, uh, with, <laughs> without a doubt. This will be a real problem. And I don't know if Dennis has an answer to that. Attempt to cancel with, uh, trust me, blow it up. Blows it up. That was going to go to seven. Uh, and getting past that six threshold is so important because Dennis could blow the other two objectives up here and win the game. Yeah, he, he doesn't have the unit damage out or objective damage out right now, but we'll see what he does. Looks like Palpatine. Holocron comes out. Now, Dennis knows what that's ne this next objective is. So he knows if things are going to be returned to hand or not. Which could affect your decision making. And I feel like right here is when he either remembers what's about to happen or he plays out Palpatine. <laughs> <laughs> those, are, those are, I feel like, the two options. The two options, here. yeah. Um, or he could use this moment to just load up as much objective damage as he can on the board, try to take out a few objectives, and then get everything bounced and hope to rebound and make sure that that's enough to maybe win the game on dial. Yeah, if, if cards bounce, though, even with just leaving against all odds on the board, Matt literally needs to draw any yellow unit. And the game is over. And it's pretty much just over yeah. uh, if, the, if the board does bounce. So I, I don't know that that gets you quite where you want to go. I mean, what other options does this have here? Um, I mean, if your board's going to get bounced, you definitely are going to swing for as much as you can. Yeah, swing for as much like damage you. as possible. I think that's what Palpatine's going to do. And you don't care about spending things on guys. Looks like he's just going to stick himself in the best position he can because, you know what, when the board resets, the light side rejoices for this very reason. Yeah, pretty much any time the board resets, the light side's happy. We'll see what happens. And the power of that objective, unreal to me. Swinging downtown on the Anuits. That's loose going to get buried. Unless he gets bounced. I think he might be. And then, unfortunately, that just opens up the uh, freeholders play. Yeah, and, you know, Matt uh, being willing to blow up his own objective there, because Matt knows what the objective is, too. So I've got a feeling we're about to see a board clear. Yeah, Dennis is. There it is. False report. So I've got a feeling uh, that that's going to be the game. We'll see what happens, but this is classic. Yes. And Freeholders. I saw Freeholders. Yeah, this feels to me why we had a restricted list mid-regional season pop up. And a holding all the cards, so let's just go ahead and put two more cards in your hand. Dennis, this is game. Yeah. Uh, this is just brutal. Dennis isn't 100% sure of it yet, but... It's happening. It's happening. All he needs, what, you got two damage on the middle and you got three damage to do on the top. Yeah, I mean, Freeholders have four objective damage at this point. Um, Sleuth has three, so this is certainly game. Uh, the one thing, there it is, shaking hands. The one thing I think Dennis could have done to maybe prevent this a little bit, he had a chance earlier to swing in unopposed at the, uh, the Trust Me when it had four damage before this turn. Uh, and the board board clear would have happened a turn earlier, mm -hmm. uh, which w would have had, a, I think, a major impact on what Maybe happened. Maybe would have helped. Who knows? But thank you guys uh, for joining us. We're going to have more games coming from Grand Zero Games in Tyler, Texas. Thank you for watching, and we'll catch you then.